Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 8. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at creating a fade in screen, we're going to take a look at some UI, so what that means is a bit of text on the screen, and we'll also look at the skybox and a little bit more on lighting. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else that I have on this channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So let's start with a fade screen. Now the idea of what a fade screen is, is we start at completely black and it fades in so we see the entire scene. And we can ultimately create it without any C-sharp coding, it really is as simple as that. And we've already dealt with animations, so that means that we could use the same animation technique to create this fade in screen. So we can start by going to Game Object, UI, and let's go to, what should we choose? Should we choose a raw image? We'll go with that one. I guess you could choose image if you wanted to. I'm just choosing raw image because why not? So let's change the color to black. So select the little uh, color tool over here and change it to black. And you've probably noticed at this point, down here at the bottom of our hierarchy, we have something called canvas and event system automatically created for us. So what this means is that everything we create UI, whether it be just text on screen or the hood or, you know, anything at all that we see visually, but not as a 3D object as such, appears here in the canvas. So, for example, if we press play now, we'll see, or we should see, but we don't. That's because it's not positioned correctly. But either way, this raw image will appear inside the canvas. So if I double click the canvas, you'll see this white outline. And that's the reason why this particular object, the raw image, hasn't appeared because it's not within the screen space dictated by this canvas. Remember, the canvas is what we see overlaid on our game. So to sort that out, let's bring this raw image, make sure we have it selected, and let's anchor it right here. So we select this little tool here and let's select this one. And what this will do is it will stretch the image both upwards and across. And what that means is that no matter what the resolution, this image will be stretched across the entire screen, providing we have the correct numbers set up here in our transform. So if we set this to zero, 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 and zero, it will cover the entire screen as we can see. So if we press play now, we will just see a black screen. Remember, the canvas overlays on top of the game. So let's get this into a fade screen. And what we'll do is we'll create a new folder in animations and we'll call it general animation. In fact, we'll just call it general. Why have the word animations again? And in this general folder, we'll need to make sure that we have this raw image selected. So let's right click and rename first. Let's call it fade in. And what we'll do with this is create an animation on it. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the rest of this raw image because it's irrelevant at this point. But rest assured, we will go into more details in this component later on. The only thing we need it for right now is the color. So on fade in, let's click on animation, click on create, and let's call this fade in anim. And then press the record button. So we've done this before. We kind of know what we're doing here. We need to determine how quickly our fade screen is going to work. So I'm going to do it over the course of one whole second. And again, we're 60 frames a second. So we set our first keyframe at zero. And we need to make sure we have the alpha, which is right here, set as 255. So your best course of action here is to manually type in this box down here, 255. And what that means is that the alpha, or as uh, I guess we could just call it the translucency, is set as full. So this means the object is opaque. An alpha of zero would mean it's completely transparent, and anything in between would be the translucency. So we need to have it completely opaque, hence 255. So let's then move to frame 60, which is one second, and let's set the alpha or the opacity to zero. We need it completely see-through. So zero does the trick. Then we can close that and then press the record button once again to stop. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now go to our project settings, click on the animation, and up here we just need to untick loop time. Now we've dealt with animation component in the past, 
This time we're going to deal with animator components for the fade screens, just because I like to give a little bit of variation. And we've dealt with it before because we've we've worked with this animator component and it, it's not really relevant at this point, but again, once we get into deep development, it will be. So fade in. Let's click it and now let's press play. And there we go. There's our fade in screen. Perfect. That's all we really need to do at this point, and that's how easy it is. So what we have to do is basically keep this active until it needs turning off because we need to interact with the screen. So for now, we don't really need any scripts upon this to work with. It's fine as it is. So next, if we go to our scripts and go into intro scene, if we remember this A01 camera script, I'm going to just open that up just so we can quickly review what is going on. I guess we could do it here, but I always like to do it in Visual Studio in case I do need to make any changes. Because the next thing we're going to do involves some UI on the screen, which will effectively stay there when we switch cameras. So basically, as I said, it's all about that layering on top of our game itself. That is what the canvas is all about. And you won't believe how useful that can actually be. It's just unbelievably useful because it's not just fade in so that you can do and a little bit of text on the screen that you can do you can do so much more with that canvas so visual studio is loading up now and like i said we're going to add a bit more ui to this game it's taking a little bit of time to load it's having a good thing so if you remember we have that cam switcher the second cam comes on after seven seconds so I think that should still work. I, I haven't changed anything in the meantime. So we wait seven seconds and it should switch to the second cam. And it does. Perfect. So let's add in some text UI now. Game object, UI, and let's have text. Double click on text so we can zoom in and see it. And I want to have this text over somewhere here on the right, I think, for now. So we can choose our anchor point up here and we'll select top right. Now, although this doesn't necessarily anchor it to the top right, it just means its default anchoring position is here at the top right. So it'll always appear in this place relative to its distance away right now. So what we need to do is pull it closer. So we'll have it about here. Now, what this is going to be is it's going to be some credits so let's start with something very simple and let's have this as someone who has a lead designer so type lead designer and we'll have this color as white so we can set the color right here as white let's also increase the font size to maybe 18 bring it this way a little bit and we could change our font if we want to. We're not going to in this tutorial, but we will be changing our font because we're not going to keep the standard Arial. Nobody likes standard Arial fonts, but we will change it. Uh, font style, you've got the standard, you can have bold, you could have italic. I'm going to have it as normal, just on this one. Line spacing, alignment, as you would expect in any word processing application or even Excel or anything like that. They're pretty standard. And we've already got the color set. So I'm going to right click and rename. And let's call this cred underscore lead des. And now within this object, I would like to have um, another. I, I guess we can have another object in there. We, we could animate them both, I guess, if we want to. But I'll show you how we can do that in a moment because we can use the same animation on two different objects. So now go to UI and text and it creates a child object. And this text, I'm going to have Jimmy Vegas. Why not? And let's have this font size as bigger. So we could have this as 26. And I'm also going to bold it, I think. And color again, white. Now you'll notice that Jimmy Vegas doesn't fit into this box. So we can use the rec tool right here, which is this little square. And we can select these corners right here and drag the size so it fits. We can also then move the shape around and you'll see it snap to other objects quite neatly. And that's very handy. So now our credit looks a little bit like this. So I'm going to right click and rename this one. 
and cred underscore lead des underscore name. So now this is our credit. So what we're going to do with this, let's have this fade in on us. We don't want it to just appear randomly on the screen. We're going to have our scene start and then after a couple of seconds it fade in. So we can do that very, very easily. Animations. And let's go to, should we do this in general or intro scene? Because let's do this in intro scene because this is only going to be specific to the intro. So within here, what we'll do is on cred lead des, what we'll do is animation, create, and cred fade anim, and save. We're not making any reference to the fact that it's the lead designer credit or the name of this credit. We're just going to call it that credit fade anim. And we're going to do this over a course of, let's say, a second again, because I like to keep things consistent. Let's press the record button, set off first keyframe, so make sure we're on zero. And this is all going to be done once again using alpha. So we can change the alpha to zero. So we need to set it as zero as the first keyframe, so we cannot see it at all. We just cannot see it. So that means, same principle as with the fade screen, we can change this to 60th frame, change the alpha to 255, and it appears. So click X on that, click the record button again to stop it, and on cred fade anim, untick loop time. Now what will happen here is if we press play, Jimmy Vegas will appear, however this one will fade in, just like it does with a fade screen. So let's now attach that animation to Jimmy Vegas as well, and we can just drag and drop onto there. And you'll notice it creates a second controller right here, one for the uh, actual designer credit and one for the actual name credit. So now, even though it's the same animation, it will work on both objects. Perfect. So now let's have this in a different context. Let's only have this appear after a couple of seconds of the game starting. So let's go on cred lead des and untick. So we turn it off so it's not on screen. Let's go to our uh, script, which is a01 cam switch that we opened previously. Let's add a new variable, public game object, and we'll call this uh, cred lead des semicolon. And what we'll do is we will change where we've got the wait for seconds seven. We'll actually change this to, let's change it to three. And then after those three seconds, we will have cred lead des dot set active true semicolon. And now we will wait for a further four seconds before switching to the camera. So once that's saved, we just need to attach that variable to the script. So sequence holder, it's going to think, there we go, it's on there. So let's drag and drop that onto there. Now what's going to happen here is the game will start, it will fade in, uh, the credit will appear. However, the clever thing is, even when we switch camera, that credit will still appear. Because again, no matter what's going on, it will always overlay. So, so far so good. And what we can do after this is we can work more with these credits and have more appear across the screen as the intro sequence plays out. And that's something we're going to build upon as we go through. What I want to do now is work with a skybox. So a skybox is this whole area that we see around us. So this blue, brown, yellow, this thing is technically a skybox. And at the moment, it's just the default skybox, but with no light attached to it. Let's go to the asset store. I've picked this skybox set right here simply because it's free and there's a lot to it and it's quite nice. I like it a lot. All I've done to get to this is type in skybox in the asset store and gone to free only because on this channel everything is free. And I've gone to this one right here. So if you want to choose the same one, you would just download, uh, import, whatever you have here, make sure you're logged in. If you wanted to choose a different skybox, that's entirely up to you. We've dealt with the asset store before. We know how this works. So I've gone ahead and I've already downloaded that skybox right here. And we can see these are all the examples right there. Perfect. It's great. So let's choose one to now attach to our scene. 
But before I do, I want to zoom in onto the actual models themselves down here. Because we'll notice something almost straight away when we attach a skybox. So if we go to Window, Rendering, and or Light Settings, for older versions of Unity, the light settings will be in this menu uh, just straight here. You don't need to go to Rendering. So Light Settings, what we can do is we can either drag and drop any of these up here, or we can select this little button here and choose a skybox. I'm going to go with, let's go with this one. So I'm going to drag and drop this here, and you can see the scene has now changed colour. It's changed colour because the skybox itself dictates how the game looks. So this is how the skybox now looks for our game. So I'm going to go back into here, and let me see now. What should we do? I know what we can do. Let's have the intensity multiplier go up. You can see how much it changes, and down. Again, you can see again how much it changes. So it depends what kind of atmosphere you want in your game. You could always change it, let's say this Dark Storm one. You're not going to see too much of a difference at first, but then you have to wait. It just quickly re-renders everything. Now, I like this Dark Storm one, and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one because I want this intro scene to be quite, not gritty, but I want some, you know, arrogance to it. And I feel that having that sort of skybox is going to add some arrogance. Although we'll never see the skybox, or I don't intend to at least, in this scene, I should say, I still feel it adds a lot to the game. And it certainly will as we get into post-processing fairly soon. So you can always change the intensity multiplier as high or as low as you want. And the source, you could change the colour. And again, it would be a case of changing to what you would want. You give it a blue tint. That looks a bit crazy, but hey. Again, if you change it to black, it would be the set, pretty much the same as what you have set as skybox. So I'm going to keep that like that. That's going to be my skybox for this scene. Uh, what we could do is change this light to give it a bit more of a cold feel. We can change it to a blue kind of colour. But you want to keep it as kind of neutral as possible. And what you could do is you could have this blue lighting over here, just a little bit, to about here. In fact, I'm going to zero out the rotation so I can move it straight. And I'm going to hold control, press D, bring the new light. Oops, I've duplicated a game. Uh, bring this new light over this way, but actually change it to a little bit contrasting of yellow. Now you can see the two lights now will mix together to create a different kind of effect within the game. And you could theoretically change the intensity on both to half. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Again, it's up to you what kind of atmosphere you want to create with your game. So I suggest playing with the lighting just a little bit and see what you can come up with. So I'm going to press play now and see what this looks like. Okay, so the intro sequence is coming together quite nicely now. So, next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we're going to have our character walking in front of the camera. Uh, we'll work more with animations and have the camera switch over. We'll add some more um, UI elements. And I think from then on, we're going to start looking at sound effects. We'll have, uh, you know, the, the entire scene play out. We'll have another camera in place. So it's going to get kind of cool now, and we're slowly learning all of the elements that we need to build this big open world. And I'm sure I've said it before, the reason why we're doing this intro scene first is because we can gather a lot of random knowledge that we can then smash together and build a cool open world. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.